Welcome to Tech London, a show featuring interviews with London's top creative entrepreneurs, startups, investors, design agencies, internet marketers, and freelancers that make up the Tech London online community, which mostly lives on the Slack instant messaging platform. We rotate through both hosts and guests for these interviews, so you have the chance to hear from multiple perspectives on London's tech scene. Hello, thanks for that introduction, Jonathan. And in our um, Tech London studio today, I have Miro, who runs a small little thing to help you manage your offices. Is, is, is that is that accurate, or would you like to re represent yourself, Miro? <laughs> yeah, thanks so much. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, we are building a uh, corking, flexible workspace and hybrid uh, workplace management platform. Uh, so we try to cover uh, quite a wide range of of, of tools for uh, for working in a in a flexible way, so yeah, I think that's uh, that's about right. So we like I know a lot of you listening here work in co working spaces, and a lot of co work probably about three co working spaces I've been in over the last decade have used Office R and D as their uh, as their platform. Um, one of those being Bathtub, the ballroom. Um, and where, where did you where were you when you like kicked off and started this whole? Because um, now it's just you know what we do co-working um but you know when you started in 2014 is that right um yeah well just about the end of 2014 we started in sofia bulgaria uh where the very first idea was to build uh, what we were calling agile workplace management uh software uh, for any company out there uh, that wants to uh to manage their workspace in a newer uh, nicer way uh but early 2015 uh we were invited by a uh, accelerate a space called Pylabs uh, out of London uh, to join their program. And we happened to to land in Second Home, uh, which was just the nicest and trendiest corking space probably in the world. Uh, it was so beautiful and amazing. And we thought, well, this is, uh, this is brilliant. Uh, this is the future of work. Uh, and we, first of all, we want to work in a corking space. Second of all, we actually want to uh, not necessarily pivot, but but might make our platform very specific for the co-working niche. Uh, and ever since we've been building co-working space management for product. That is. Um, so we're going to go through this super fast because, so there's a, there's a book you mentioned, which I'm in love with that helped you work out how to not make, not make what you were making and make what people wanted. How, how did you go about that part? <laughs> yeah. Well, so um, long story short, when we were trying to get first customers, I started to contact all the corking space in London and uh, I wasn't really trying to sell them a product, but I was trying to validate the problem. So I just read a book called The Mom Test and it completely changed my point of view on how to build products. So instead of going and pitching to customers what amazing uh, stuff we built, uh, instead we I went to meet them and ask them very open uh, questions about their problems. And this is how we actually discovered that we've built does not solve problem number one, two, three, four, five, not even close. Uh, it was like problem number nine for our target customers. <laughs> and, and we, uh, as a result, we managed to really learn uh, all the, 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 the problems of the industry, go back and start solving them and working with customers. But this book, The Mom Test, completely changed our our uh, point of view and how we want to build product. Yeah, me, me, uh, me too. That, that, that made reading that book. I've, I've read it like five times now, um, and that <laughs> has made me realize Amazing. how unsmart I actually am. Um, because when you ask when you ask piercing questions, um, people give you honest answers, and you can save I know, probably save millions millions of pounds, dollars, or euros, whatever you're talking in. Um, so <laughs> when I when I first heard of you, there was there was which must have been like 2015, 16, there was, I know, probably about 10 people at the most working for you. So, so, and you were, how, how have you, just say a few words about how you've blown up and how many people you have working around the globe now, because it's, it's just like, it is a hockey stick rise. Yeah, well, so we, we grew quite nicely. So we are 120 people now uh, split between uh, four offices, uh, uh, London, uh, Melbourne, Australia, uh, Atlanta, Georgia, and Sofia, Bulgaria, uh, where we have quite uh, a good uh, uh, 
product engineering teams, very strong go-to-market in, in, in Atlanta and the rest. We try to be as global as we possibly can. Uh, that's why we kind of spread out. Uh, but at the same time, that's, uh, that's really amazing because obviously we work out of co-working spaces across the globe. We can uh, truly understand the, the, the problems of the industry, try to solve them. And uh, yeah, it's been a journey. So we service now a thousand customers uh, around the globe, um, many buildings, uh, probably 2,000 and more uh, buildings uh, use our uh, tools to manage their spaces. And uh, yeah, we're looking forward to an exciting future. So, so one of the reasons I wanted to, probably the main reason, I don't want to say one of the reasons, the main reason I wanted to talk to you is because we're, we're doing, you're joining us on uh, Coworking Europe, which is our, uh, which is the, I say ours, sorry, the, the, the biggest kind of longest running European co-working conference. And mm-hmm. we have the idea project folks, which we'll put a link in the show notes, which is about inclusion, diversity, equity, and accessibility in co-working, um, which you know, and a lot of the, a lot of the conferences that happen just have you know people like me and Miro, like you know, nice white men talking about how great <laughs> they are at their at their jobs. But other people are available to do that, um, which is one of the challenges we're overcoming. But an- another sort of lesser challenge which we have in our company, like our, our company is um, founded in Latvia, and our founder Alex has had this. You know, when he goes around, he's hit the perception. I'm trying to think how to say it nicely like the the reception he gets in investor circles and other things is is pretty poor compared with if he was from london or san francisco or munich and stuff like that so mm. how um you know how, how's that been for you yeah no it's funny that uh you're saying that but uh yeah may, so many times when when i'm looking like movies and stuff uh, the bulgarian uh usually it's uh it's always the bad guy <laughs> so it's either uh, the bulgarian the russian the latvian uh, that kind of stuff uh which doesn't help uh us uh fundraise <laughs> so, uh there is a lot of uh, um it's a stigma that we need to uh to fight we need to be uh better uh honestly um I think for the most part, fundraising was was very difficult uh, for us. And it's, it's very difficult because people cannot relate with you, uh, especially people in, 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 in geographies that are uh, very dense in, in venture capital, like London or, or, or San Francisco, uh, Germany. So uh, they don't know you they don't know the uh, the universities they don't know other successful startups from your region uh, they only know and hear about the bad things happening uh, so you have to you have to really stand out and even then it's it's extremely difficult that's why uh, for us there are uh, a certain number of venture capital funds that are doing specific job to bridge this gap and look for these gems uh, in in our region, and then work with uh, with uh, with startups in our regions, and then uh, help us and help them pitch uh, to to other VCs. But it's still a really challenging and difficult uh, process. Is, um, is, it, is it exhausting trying to like reestablish yourself every time? Yeah. Certainly, it's certainly exhausting. It certainly uh, slows you down uh, because uh, business, as usual, is extremely difficult, uh, and pitching VCs is, is extremely difficult. Now you just have to do it two times better, three times better, <laughs> and 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 not just better, but you know, fight off all of these um, concerns uh, that people uh, have about about you just being born uh, somewhere. Um, so, yeah, so it certainly doesn't help. <laughs> and what, what, so like, after, you've done, after you've done all that pitching, do you, do you think because you had to work harder, and this doesn't make it okay that you had to work harder, but because you have to work harder, do you think you came up, you, you, did it help your company or did it just, was it just an inconvenience in getting going? Well, I think it's just an inconvenience. I mean, I cannot say it's super helpful, um, but yeah, I would I would classify it as uh, as inconvenience. By the way, I'll just open a bracket. This thing is really changing. It's not changing as fast as as probably you and I are hoping, 
but I can certainly see things moving in the right direction. Um, and a lot of the traditional, very US focused uh, investors look into Europe uh, with a different eye, with a more open uh, open eye. And even Eastern Europe, it's, it's becoming uh, something more interesting than just, uh, you know, ex ex communist uh, stuff. A place to, a place to go for and, cheap stag dues. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, and where all the all the gangsters and bad things are coming from. Uh, I think that's yeah. Right I, I, now, I, always... I think Bulgaria, Romania, especially Latvia, Lithuania, Estonia are booming. Poland. There are so many amazing startups. Like just a. Uh, uh, a news from today, a friend of mine that's sitting in our building here in Sofia, Bulgaria, just raised Series B. That's one hundred and twelve million uh, dollars. Uh, Series B. That's I think that's the the biggest uh, uh, ever Series B in the Southeast Asia, uh, so, <laughs> Southeast Europe. Sorry, <laughs> and I think I think this will change, but it's not as quick as as uh, I was hoping. Uh, there was when I was in Warsaw the, a few weeks ago. I was talking to someone about this topic, and um, they 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 pretty much. I'm not going to say it again because they pretty much said exactly what you're doing. But there's um there, there's a a lot of um, excitement and activity. I mean, there has been for years actually because I've been, I've been interested in that area since I since I went to Poland in 2004, and I've always kind of looked out for things. And we've gone to co-working conferences in um we, we had a we had a meet up in Croatia. Mm-hmm. Um, we, you know, we're, we're based in Latvia. We did the co-working, co-living conference in Serbia. Um, so yeah. we've always had an idea of what's going on there. And now that's just got even deeper, but it, it's, it's a really, you know, it's, it's very exciting. I want to, um, draw, I'm going to put a couple of links in the show notes, folks. So there's a, an article in Wired magazine about, um, this topic. And also there's a book called Brotopia, which is by Emily Chang, mm-hmm. which talks a lot about how stuff is centered around i think it's called like the breaking up of the silicon valley boys club um Mm. and then there's another another talk by um nilifer merchant which was an event we did in paris in 2014 which is which is again around this around this topic um so in the end miro um like did you did you manage to get any investment Yes, so we we closed the ten million round, and in fact, we we've got like five uh, term sheets. Um, some of them from the UK, some from the US, and some from uh, from uh, mainland Europe. So we we fought, and we we we've got uh, what we or what we needed and what we wanted. So I'm I'm very happy, and I'm very positive that um, everything that we are now making will make a difference along with these other companies that are raising funds from Eastern Europe, I think we'll see more and more of that and, and it will accumulate value and, uh, and, and change uh, going forward. So at least I hope that's the, <laughs> that's the case. I'm, I'm, I'm sure it will. There's, um, I, I know a lot of people in our industry, um, you know, from this week in co-working and stuff are like really rooting for um you know, you you from your that geographical location uh, raising that amount of money, and also the way you're just you know uh, enhancing our industry as you go forward. Um, yeah, by the way, so, just a quick stat on yeah, yeah, sure. on, on very interesting stuff I, I was reading recently uh, by a UK based uh, VC. Um, they share that Eastern European startups generate the most revenue per invested doors per invested door across the entire world. Uh, which I found very interesting. So basically, from a return investment point of view, it seems to be a pretty good <laughs> place uh, to put your money. <laughs> so, yeah, I actually read a similar thing because I was looking up the um, Estonian guy that started Bolt, and there was a, mm-hmm. a there was a whole article about maybe it was on the Hustle or something like that. But there was something about that, and it said the 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 return on investment is is gigantic. I, I don't want to quote any figures because <laughs> I can't remember them, but it was a yeah. similar thing. Where, um, you know, is, is there anything else you'd like to add to that or where can we find, hunt you down online and get an autograph with you? <laughs> well, I mean, uh, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a, a humble guy. You can find me on LinkedIn. I'd love to talk about uh, 
raising funds in Eastern Europe, I can certainly uh, shoot you some introductions uh, and, and all that. So feel free uh, to connect, uh, mute on yourself. Uh, you can easily, um, it's a difficult name, but at the same time, it's the uh, same first and last name. <laughs> uh, you can find me on LinkedIn and, and connect if you if you want to, to chat about uh, uh, fundraising, venture capital and, and all that. That's great. We'll put we'll put a link in the show notes, folks. Thank you very much for listening today. Really appreciate you taking the time to be with us today, Miro. And we'll um, put a link to the Coworking Europe live stream session for the inclusion diversity event we're doing together. Um, take care, folks. Be careful out there. It is a jungle. <laughs> take care. Cheers. Bye. You've been listening to the Tech London Show. If you're interested in joining the community or even making an appearance on this show, make sure you join our Slack group over at techlondon.io. Till next time.